Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Meg and we do crafty things here. So if you are new, hi, hey, hello, how's it going? Welcome. If you like crafty things, please consider subscribing too. But if you are a returning subscriber, oh my gosh guys, we're already up to 500 subs. By the time this goes out, we will have broke 500 subs. I think I'm two away right now. So thank you if you are a returning subscriber for tuning into another video and um, crushing it, sharing it spreading the word about my channel. I really do appreciate it. So after last week's video, which if you haven't seen, I will link in the cards for you. You guys finally got to see my entire bracelet collection. Yes, finally I put it out. And Right away, there was a couple people on YouTube on a couple different videos that asked about uh, some specific closures that were on some of those bracelets. And then on Instagram before, some of you had asked me about different ties, starts, and endings for bracelets. So today's video is going to be very specifically about the buckle closure that you guys would have seen in that video. If you haven't watched that video, don't worry, I'm going to explain what that is right now. So this bracelet, which you, um, if you're following me on Instagram, you may recognize this. I did this yesterday. The buckle closure has a finished loop at the top of it. And at the bottom, it has a loop at the bottom as well and a finished tie. And the idea behind this is that it makes your bracelet removable. How they work is when you're putting it on your wrist, you push your end knot towards your wrist through the top loop and then you push it back out the loop you created at the bottom of your bracelet and you do want it to be snug like this so it stays and the idea is is that large knot holds your bracelet in place there are some pros and cons that i'm going to lay out for you to begin with that i have noticed from using this over the years and i just want to put them out front so you guys know what you're getting into before you start putting them on your bracelets. So the pros is obviously, it's a really clean, nice, professional look. Um, you cannot complain or disregard that fact. It is a very clean look. It makes your bracelet look finished. It looks really nice. I agree a thousand percent on that. Um, the other pros are, like I said, it's removable. So if you're into sports, like if you're into volleyball or something where you're using your hands and you're not allowed to wear um, like jewelry or wristbands or anything, something like this is going to be great for you because you can take that bracelet on and off. Or like I said at the beginning, if you're just someone who likes to coordinate your outfits in the day, maybe your red and orange bracelet clashes a little too much with your purple ensemble for you. So um, with that in mind, that is the great aspects of this buckle. The downsides of this buckle are that it becomes not adjustable, where if you have a finished loop and you do a braid on the end, then you get this, you get the quality that it's adjustable, where if my wrist is smaller than your wrist, I can just pull the braid tighter and tie it where I need to, and I haven't messed up any construction of the bracelet. And the opposite as well. If I make a bracelet for someone who has a larger wrist, they can just slack out more braid and tie it where they need to without affecting the integrity of the crafted project. So if you have an exact measurement or you are making this for yourself, this is a great option. Um, however, like I said, it makes it a little bit difficult to sell pre-made bracelets unless you are very, very specific about how big the bracelet is once the tie is done up. Because this is much more difficult to tie. You can, of course, just tie this through there like you would put on a normal bracelet. However, this finished buckle is much thicker and stiffer to tie and it doesn't sit as nicely on your wrist as a normal braid would. So that is something to keep in mind when you're making these. And then the only other thing I have to say about them is after some extended wear, this knot will get worn down from being pulled in and out of the loop so much, and you may have to undo it and retie it. 
especially if you're someone like I used to use these and then I just wear it on my wrist all the time unless something came up that I had to take it off. So what would happen to me was I'd get the bracelet wet, I'd go swimming, whatever, and over time that loosens up the fabric a bit, it loosens up the knots a little bit, and the knot would slide out, I'd have to undo it and retie it. So that is something to be considerate of when you're deciding if you wanna put buckle ties on your bracelet. And I just wanted to put that stuff all out front so you guys know what to expect. You aren't getting any surprises when you do put these on your bracelets. With all of that in mind, let's jump into how to make a buckle closure for your friendship bracelets. So what you're gonna do is whatever pattern you choose, you're gonna want to cut your string however long you normally cut it and then add a bit. So I did wingspan plus about six inches or so, roughly, because you are going to use more string for your ties. So if you watched my double loop video as well, you'll see how I do finish ties. And if you've watched some of my other alpha tutorials and stuff, you will have seen this, but I'm gonna go ahead and jump right into it. I'm going to cover our buckle with purple, I think. So I'm going to pull my purple string out. Everything is folded in half and I have it out here separate. Everything is still being held in half and I'm going to take my loop of the string I want to use to cover my loop here and I'm going to stick it through. So it looks like this right now. Okay, and then I'm going to pull both of my loose ends through the loop of my covering string and it will create a lark's head knot at the top like so and now I'm going to split those strings in half and the string that is on the left I'm going to move to the left and the string that is on the right I'm going to move to the right and then I'm going to unfold my strings as well and we're going to kind of just keep this held here in the center as much as possible and we're going to start covering our loop so if you take a look here we have a knot or it looks like a stitch on this side facing up towards us on our uh, covering string so i'm going to shift this upwards so now that bump that was facing up when we're like this is now to my left and I'm going to pinch the other half of the strings in my um, pointer finger and middle finger. Now I'm just going to do forwards and backwards knots. I'm going to alternate them because I want it to be a straight stitch like we see on this one here but you can do it Chinese staircase if you want, just do all forwards knots, all backwards knots. Um, basically, it doesn't matter, you don't have to finish your loop like this. Finish your loop however you wanna finish your loop. If you wanna do teardrop, if you want to do hitch knots around it, whatever you wanna do, this is just how I do it. So now I'm going to make a backwards knot because that will put the next little bump on the right hand side as you can, oops, sorry, as you can see now. So now when we hold it up, we've got a bump on the left, a bump on the right, and then I'm going to switch and sorry, I've moved my fingers a bit so it's easier for you guys to see. I'm gonna do a forwards knot. And I'm holding this all in my hand because I don't have a loop or anything yet to anchor with. And then I'm going to switch and I'm going to do a backwards knot. And I'm going to keep doing this until I get half of the length I want for my starting loop. And it doesn't matter how big this loop is because this loop does not hold your knot in place. So now I'm going to rotate my work and we're going to work on the other half of the loop. And we're going to do the same thing we did before. So we can see the last knot, 
the lump was on our what is now our right hand side so we're going to go ahead and we're going to do a forwards knot to put the bump on the left hand side there we go and then a backwards knot and continue that Now I have it how I like. You can manipulate your knots a little bit if you want them spread out a little more, if you want them pushed a bit closer together. Now is your time to do that. I, however, like it just the way it is. So I'm gonna fold it in half and yep, I think that's gonna be a perfectly sized loop for this bracelet. So now we're going to close off this loop. I'm just gonna go straight across so y'all can't judge my teardrop loops. <laughs> Okay, so you'll do whatever the first row of your pattern is. I'm gonna time lapse a little bit of making my bracelet. So now if you've done your loops the same way I have, this is going to be your tricky knot where you could get weird um, strings and stuff. So these two need to tie together in my pattern. So I'm gonna pull it tight. And you'll see I've also done this in my double loops video. But I'm gonna pull it tight. I'm going to pin it with my pinky finger to keep it as tight as possible. And I'm going to pull the second half of my knot up towards my pinky finger and slowly pull it over. Okay, so at this point in time, I've gone ahead and I have completed the length I want for my bracelet. So we have, as of right now, our finished loop. However, it is you decided to finish your loop. The length of our bracelet, which in my case was pattern 24036 on bracelet book. And now we've got the length of our bracelet. We are going to create our buckle portion. So if we look at this bracelet here that means we need to create a loop at the end of our bracelet okay so at this point what you want to do is you want to split your strings into two and we're going to focus on one side at a time so i'm going to start with the right just because that's what i feel like starting with and we're going to start covering this half of the strings so you can choose to do this the same way you did your finished loop at the beginning, which is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to use the same technique I used up here, down here. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to start doing my backwards forwards. So I'm gonna start with a backwards knot. Oh my gosh. And then I'm going to do a forwards knot. backwards knot and a forwards knot and you do this for the length you want this loop to be now the important thing to note here is that you want this loop to be somewhat tight because your end knot, like I said earlier, your ending knot is what has to hold your bracelet on. So you want your loop to be big enough to put your the knot of all your strings through, but not so big that the knot isn't going to stick there. And then I'm going to set these ones aside and move over to these ones. 
Okay, so I have grouped my strings back together now because this loop I think is going to be a good size to hold our knot. Of course, if you're not sure, you can always take your string and kind of tie an overhand knot in them with all your strings together to see how big that knot is going to be. But at this point, what we need to do is we need to bring our two points together for a single tail. So if you look here, I actually change up the knot. You can, of course, keep with this pattern or whatever covering you did for your loop and for this bottom buckle part, but I like the look of the bump on the outside remaining on the outside, like your knots. So I'm gonna change the way I do that. So I've gone ahead, I've put all my strings together and I've already sectioned out the two longest purple strings from each section and we're going to start knotting this. So to do this knot, you need to create a sail over all of your strings. Then you're going to take your longest string from your left hand group or the string that you want to cover your tails with. So that may be, you know, maybe you want your buckle to be purple and your tie to be blue. That's cool too, whatever works for you. And we're going to lay this over top of our sail. So almost like we were knotting up here, like we were doing a backwards knot, but our base string is over top in this case. And now we're going to stick our finger through our loop and pull that left string up and through. And we're gonna pull it tight up to the bottom of our buckle here. Okay. And now we know for sure that's how big our buckle is going to be. And now to keep it straight so that it doesn't spiral, we're going to do the opposite. So we're going to make a four over all of our strings. We're going to take our right hand knotting string and put it over top of our folded string. And then you're going to pull that loose end through the hole of the four and pull it tight. We're going to make a sail over all of our strings with our right hand string. We are going to take our left hand string and we are going to lay it over top of the end of that sail. And then we are going to pull our left hand string, the loose end is gonna come up through the hole on the right hand side. And then we're gonna pull it tight. And then we're going to make a four this time with our left hand string. We're going to lay our right hand string over top. And then that right hand string is going to come up through the hole on the left hand side. And we're going to pull it tight. And we're gonna do that for the length you need for your tie. Now determining the length you need for your tie will depend on your bracelet. So if we look at this one, you can see you need at least double the length actually required to cover the wrist. So to, for my ends to meet, I need my tie to be this long to fill in the rest of my wrist. To make this actually closable, our string has to be able, our tail has to be able to fold back to go through that loop. So you need to make it double the length required to go around the wrist. So I'm going to continue doing this here. Also really cool to note before this tutorial was even out, one of you guys posted on Instagram to your stories that you had made a Stranger Things bracelet for your sister and tried doing buckle ties on it. And it looked really cool and that's really cool that um, I'm able to inspire you guys to try new things. 
So hopefully, she said she was making it for her sister, so I hope her sister likes it. But I think that's really cool. If you guys ever follow one of my tutorials to make something or you see something that inspires you to do something, totally tag me in it in your stories or your post or whatever. I love to see what you guys have created and if I helped you or if something I did in some way inspired you, then I think it's so cool. Okay, so here's what I'm thinking, guys. October is rapidly approaching and I am debating, like I know there's like vlogoween where people try to post like every day for, you know, however long, but I was just thinking, I was kind of thinking about doing something for vlogoween, either just, I was kind of thinking about uploading just some extra videos during October with some like Halloween content, like just Halloween patterns and stuff. So if you guys think that's a good idea, let me know. Or if you have any other ideas of what I should do, also let me know. Okay, I'm going to knot this off now in just a regular overhand knot. Now that I have this as long as I need it to fit my wrist. So now we can go ahead and use our handy dandy scissors here and trim our excess. And now you have buckles on your finished bracelet. So you can go ahead and like I showed you at the beginning, we can, I'll, I'll show you how I put it on myself. So I'm going to lay the bottom face up or the back of your bracelet face up. I'm going to lay my wrist on top of it and I'm going to push this knotted end down towards my wrist and pull it through. And then I'm going to fold it and push it back up through the buckle loop. should be a little bit snug so it might take a little bit of fussing to get it in there but once it's in there you should be good and there you have it a bracelet complete with buckles so that is how you create a buckle closure for your friendship bracelets if this was a technique that you guys enjoyed if you liked this video please give it a thumbs up and until next time, I will see you guys then. Bye!